question is, does anyone need an anthracycline uh, in the era of having HER2-targeted therapy available? Um, unfortunately, only one prospective randomized clinical trial compared or looked at a non-anthracycline-based regimen uh, and in the same study to an anthracycline-based regimen. And in that trial, though it wasn't powered with a non-inferiority design to compare the anthracycline versus non-anthracycline, it was a large study, over 3,200 patients enrolled, and we see similar efficacy between the TCH and ACTH uh, treatments um, with significantly less cardiac toxicity in the non-anthracycline-based regimen. Um, keeping in mind that probably a majority, probably greater than 50% of patients are cured with local measures, especially for patients who have localized disease, stage one, stage two <coughs> disease. These patients are potentially cured by local measures. They're gonna be receiving all of the systemic toxicity, none of the benefit. So I like to keep those patients in my mind. We have no way of knowing if a patient is that patient or a patient who has microscopic metastatic disease that must be treated with systemic therapy. So in this era where we have done so well with HER2 targeted therapies, we're seeing um, outstanding disease-free survival and overall survival, um, but the toxicity in terms of the heart is underappreciated. We as oncologists focus very much on grade three, four, heart failure and cardiac deaths. And of course, those are very important endpoints to be looking at. But what about the clinically occult cardiomyopathy that is being underreported because these studies are not following asymptomatic patients long enough um, and not evaluating that as a primary sort of endpoint? I think there is an emerging field now of cardio-oncology that is very important um, to um, see sort of develop. Um, right now it is only in academic centers as I understand it or primarily in academic centers. For me personally, I'm not sending all of my patients getting HER2 targeted therapy to a cardio cardiac oncologist because I'm primarily using the TCH regimen. Um, but patients who um, are higher risk, hypertensive, obese, diabetics, strong family history of cardiac disease, um, I am sending to a cardio-oncologist for evaluation and, and treatment because there are strategies that can help lower their risk of having a significant cardiac event. If you're looking at grade three, four heart failure and cardiac deaths, yes, the rate is 4% or lower. Um, however, if you're looking at whether or not patients had to come off of HER2 targeted therapy in the first year, now we're getting um, to much higher rates if you're looking at patients who are not able to go on to receive HER2 targeted therapy because they had cardiac function declines during the anthracycline based regimen. And if you're looking at studies that followed patients long term, meaning five, ten years, um, even though they are asymptomatic from a cardiac perspective, following them with cardiac function testing, I think the numbers are higher. And we're looking and seeing now declines on the order of 20%, 25%. Um, having functional declines where their EF drops to below the lower limits of normal. So are we setting up women who are cured from their breast cancer at the age of 42, but when they get older and develop atherosclerosis, are we setting them up for cardiac uh, heart, uh, congestive heart failure in their 60s and 70s? And I'm concerned about that long-term impact. Mm -hmm.